Turning to the 2012 presidential elections, new poll numbers showing Texas Governor Rick Perry taking the lead among the Republican contenders for their party's nomination for the first time. Perry nearly doubling Mitt Romney's numbers, 29 to 17 percent in the Gallup poll of Republican voters. Congressman Ron Paul gaining momentum after finishing second in the Iowa straw poll at 13 percent, moving ahead of straw poll winner Michelle Bachman. Here now for his thoughts on what is happening in this race. Republican presidential candidate, Congressman Ron Paul of Texas. Congressman, good to have you with us. Uh, let's start with Thank these, you. let's start, if we may, with these budget uh, projections. Uh, there is nothing in this that is particularly uh, assuring. Uh, what, what do you think we should be thinking about? What is the first way in which you would urge uh, this Congress <laughs> to move ahead, if you were president, uh, to, uh, to a responsible budget? Well, I'd urge the people of this country to change what we see as the role for government. We have to address the subject of runaway entitlements and runaway spending overseas, which is no, no easy chore. But actually, I think it's worse than the report says because they report deficits, but they don't report the national debt going up, which involves right. the borrowing, you know, from the entitlement system and then, uh, well, borrowing from the uh, funds. But then there's also the entitlements. The last figure I looked at, our obligation this year will probably go up about $5 trillion, so it, it's much worse than reporting exactly what the deficit will go up. But no, the spending has to be cut, but we have to change our attitudes. As long as we maintain this attitude that we can be in Libya and all these other places and we don't have any money, I mean, you have to have deficits. And there's uh, no serious talk about uh, changing our entitlement system and how we get people, you know, out, out of the system and let them take care of themselves. And right now we've done about everything we can to keep our businesses from wanting to start new businesses in this country due to the regulatory system, the tax system, the monetary system. So it is a ma major chore, but we have to start somewhere. Let's say that we started with the federal government, since uh, you would be in charge of the federal government. Uh, there is a government here, $4 trillion being spent. Uh, the, the charge from the Tea Party is, and I think many people uh, certainly agree, uh, that they're, they've got it exactly right, uh, that government has to reduce its size, it has to reduce the scope, scale, and dimension of its operations, its presence in our lives. Why would we not first attack what is doable, and that is government itself, start reducing the size of this government and it, its, its operations? Well, there's too many that benefit. There are 20 million people who work for government, and a lot of these are local people, but they have uh, to be hired because of all the regulations of the federal government. So 20 million people, uh, you know, that's a pretty good special interest. And uh, how about all the people who get checks from the government? There's a powerful amount of special interests uh, receiving benefits, yeah. and yet the Tea Party movement is expressing themselves because they're on the uh, other end of it. They're the ones who have to produce and cough up the taxes and suffer the consequences and lose their jobs. And they're all the ones things. getting redistributed. So yeah, well, and and now they're they're getting pretty annoyed, but it's going to get rough and tumble because as soon as there's an attempt, what frightens me is about when some of these states have made some honest efforts to to rein in some of these expenditures. People get pretty angry. They even call for recall elections, and you're accused of not caring for the people, and you're being heartless. Well, well I what think if we do end up. Yeah, I, you know, I just wanted to say, uh, Congressman, I, I think we've got some pretty good news coming out of Wisconsin. Uh, Governor Scott Walker there, uh, with all of the drama, the contest, the political conflict, we are now learning that school districts and local communities are saving hundreds of millions of dollars. We're only into August. Uh, and the draconian measures uh, that yeah. were, uh, you know, uh, you know the, the fear-mongering uh, that was rampant in that state. Uh, the governor is prevailing on every quarter here. It, it, it's good news for the, for the national movement whether you call it the Tea Party movement or under the aegis of the, of the Ron Paul movement in this country, to see real empirical evidence and benefits of fiscal prudence and responsibility. Oh, I think, it, I think it's great if they can just hold in there, but I see the anger building and I see the problems getting worse, too, because I think there's going to be an inflation tax hit us and these problems are going to be with us. And I'm, I'm just afraid that uh, there'll be people in the streets like they've been in other countries when they don't get what they want. And I think it's a sign that's coming. But also, Wisconsin gives us an idea of what you can achieve if you do the right things. But, you know, they, they're too impatient. How long has he been the governor? It hasn't been a year, you know, 
eight, six, eight months, and they expect you know results, and they they won't. They're not patient at all. I think I think if they can pursue those policies in a year or so, people are going to say, "Wow!" And I think yeah. Michigan and Ohio, these other states, uh, could achieve this too if we didn't have any more problems come down on us. But I think I think we're in for some more problems, and therefore it's going to be much difficult to satisfy anybody at all. Well. I'm I guess that's why uh, we need some, some terrific leaders, and we're delighted to be talking with you, Congressman, as always. Congressman Ron Paul, appreciate it. Up Thank next, you. we're.